hello and welcome back to Solo Board Gaming Presents Commands and Colours Napoleonics from GMT Games, designed by Richard Borg, of course. Uh, and we are going to be fighting the uh, Battle of Vimiero from the Peninsula Campaign. And if you saw the last video, um, we spoke about some of the rules, some of the contents uh, that you get in the game, and also the fact that we're going to fight the battle using the uh, solo uh, rules adaptation uh, from Richard Borg, available for download on the GMT website, and he calls these uh, solo rules Power of Three, which I explained in the last video. Um, so that's what we're going to be doing. Let's have a quick look at the setup of the board. Uh, the British Army and Portuguese allies are set up on this side of the board in the red. The Portuguese, uh, small Portuguese contingent uh, are the brown blocks. They've got two uh, line infantry regiments. They've got a light uh, cavalry regiment. Uh, the British are set up in a fairly strong position. This is a, a strong contingent over here on the British left flank, uh, made up of one, two, three, four units of line infantry and some foot artillery with the commander over there as well. Uh, in the centre, again, we've got line infantry uh, on this ridge here. Um, and some foot artillery, uh, backed up by a strong light infantry unit there. Um, another line infantry unit here. This is the town of uh, Vimiro. And there's a cavalry contingent at the back here, but the, but the, uh, the Allies are fairly light on cavalry. They literally just have two uh, small light cavalry units. Uh, for pursuit, uh, which at the moment are at the back there. And the British right flank uh, is over here beyond the river. The river is actually not much more than a stream. Uh, it's fordable in all places, so that's not really much of a barrier there. We have uh, the rifles here, this small three-block contingent of, uh, I'm going to call them the 95th Rifles. Now, the French is quite a strong army, as you can see on uh, all flanks, particularly actually the right flank here, uh, which has three, four uh, line infantry regiments, foot artillery. There's cavalry here, and there's cavalry here. So the cavalry definitely outnumber the Allied cavalry. And in each of the wings, there's both a light cavalry contingent and a heavy cavalry contingent. Uh, quite powerful, those. And here again, light cavalry and heavy cavalry. Also in reserve back here, we have a unit of heavy infantry by way of French grenadiers. So that's our setup. Um, the uh, allocation of command cards in the scenario book is six command cards to uh, the Allies and five command cards to the French. The uh, victory banners, which we need to earn, like so. There's the British side. There's a French side, victory banners. Victory will come to the first side to achieve six victory banners. And we achieve victory banners basically by uh, eliminating uh, an enemy unit completely. Like for instance, that unit there consists of four blocks. So once the fourth block is gone, that's a victory banner. So that's how you earn victory banners from eliminating units. And there are additional victory banners available to the French if they can occupy both uh, 
tan hexes of Vimero, which is at the back there. That's a tall order, as far as I can see. However, this is a very strong French force. So we just bear in mind how many command cards we were allocated by the scenario, six and five. However, we're only ever going to use three. That was explained in the last video. Um, so I'm going to deal three command cards for the British. Don't know what they are, the face down. Three command cards for the French. Don't yet know what they are, the face down. And we're ready. <laughs> hey, let's go. We're going to refight the Battle of Vimirio. Peninsula War, 1808. 21st of August, actually, 1808. Let's go. And the French take the first move. Turn over the command cards. What do we have? I have Assault Right Flank. Scout center or assault center. Scout center is only for one unit, so it would be one unit in the center. Not too interested in that. The only benefit is that because it's a scouting card, it would allow me, even in these rules, the power of three rules, to take one extra command card for the next turn. Assault right flank. This is a strong flank. Number of units equal to command cards can be given orders. You see that card symbol there. And as I mentioned before, the original allocation for the French was five command cards. So I could order five units on this side. Oh, that would be a strong opening move. Bold move from the French. Or assault center, which allows me to do a similar thing. Five units could be ordered from the center. I'm going to forget that one. So what's it to be? My right flank or my center? Oh, gosh. <laughs> ah, right. Get a grip. Get a grip. Do you know? What if I can turn the allied flank? This is a strong. Yep, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. This is a strong uh, flank for the French under command. And that would be a nice target to go for, that village there. If we could establish ourselves in that, that would be a strong start from the French. That's what we're going to do. We're going to assault right flank. So I'll take these two back momentarily, like so. And we're going to assault right flank. So I can... Order five units. Okay, so uh, no units here are within ranged fire range. Uh, these are line infantry, so they can only move one hex. These are light infantry. Okay, so these guys are going to move because they can move two hexes straight, straight into the village. Now for me, that's a good move. Straight into the village. They can't now uh, battle because they've moved two hexes. They need some support. So that's one unit ordered. Next unit ordered. These line infantry. They're going to move up. These guys are moving up. So it's a strong move by this right flank. These guys will these guys will move up. My fourth unit is going to be a commander. 
it can move three hexes. One, two, three. To help steady those guys in the town. I might regret that. There's uh, a lot of potential battling that could go on here. And five units moved. So that's a strong opening move um, by the French there. Now, these guys, these two line infantry units moved one square, one hex. So they can also battle. And by battle, I mean they can engage enemy units in ranged fire. Uh, line of sight to that unit there from here. Uh, it's two hexes, which is the musketry range. They've moved, so we have to halve and round up the number of blocks. So it's two blocks, so we're going to roll two dice for the ranged fire on these guys here. Let's go. I got two flags, so we've rolled two flags on this unit here. We can ignore one flag, certainly, because these guys are supported, because they have units, uh, they have adjacent friendly units on two hex sides, but they can't ignore the second flag. My plan was that I wanted the other French unit to open fire on them as well. But because they've retired, they can't do that now. They're now out of range. Uh, but okay, uh, it's, it's, it's clear the hex here temporarily. So these guys then, who are also going to fire with, uh, for the same reason, two dice on these guys here. So they're going to roll their two ranged combat dice. Oh, through two cavalry units, their infantry units, no hit. And that's all of the combat we can do. With ranged fire, the opponent doesn't get a chance to fire back. Uh, in melee, he would get a chance to battle back. Okay, so that card is being discarded because we used it. Our remaining two cards, I have to choose to keep one of them. I'm going to keep that Assault Centre card for obvious reasons. Face down. The other one gets discarded and I draw two more Command cards. Face down on top of the French stack like so. I've no idea what those cards are. Can I carry out my plans on the next turn? Who knows? Let's go. British first turn. Let's see what the... Oh, probe right flank. Scout centre, that's no... Go. Oh, and left flank. I've got to react, haven't I? Uh, by eye, I mean. Because <laughs> I've got my British hat on now. <laughs> so, um, uh, there we go. Um, oh, you know, I could... Probe with my right flank here. But to what end? I need to react, don't I? I need to... The centre only gives me one movement in the centre. That's not much good. Uh, I'm going to have to react on this flank. This is the uh, set of orders, the command card that I'm going to use. I'm going to temporarily put those back over there. And I'm messing up my terrain. That's the thing with this. I do like things to be tidy. Okay. React with the British left flank. We've got to try and kick these guys out of town. The obvious thing to do right now, uh, one of the 
two ordered units is going to be that artillery unit there. They're going to fire um, at the guys in town. Okay, so if we look at British artillery, foot artillery, like so, on the uh, British card, uh, at a range of uh, two hexes, no, is it two? Yeah, it's two hexes. Um, we can use three dice. Yes! Three dice for the foot artillery at a range of two hexes. However, um, quick look on our terrain card. And in town, for artillery, the red column here. Uh, where are we? Uh, we minus one dice. So we started with three dice. The town is obviously providing cover that makes sense so we're going to roll two dice against this unit here the artillery fires oh. there we go that's only for melee so it doesn't count but we have one infantry hit one infantry hit I'm going to put him over to the side there so that's weakened that unit. He can't battle back. Um, now, I've done it in that order because now the line infantry here, this unit are going to go in with the bayonet uh, for my second order to melee uh, in the town there against this uh, unit of French light infantry. <laughs> they don't like it up them. Show them some cold steel. So, uh, Four units, that means four dice in melee for the Brits. So we're going to use four dice. However, uh, in town, uh, for infantry fighting into town is not clever. So there's the town, like so. Look at the blue column for infantry. Minus two for fighting into town. Because, you know, uh, we are assaulting prepared positions, if you like, because these guys are in amongst the buildings. So we're reduced to just two dice. Here we go. Oh, and that's what we threw. Uh, the artillery counts as nothing because we're fighting against infantry but the cross sabers count in melee we've reduced them once again these guys are being whittled down so okay they now get a chance to battle back and that's exactly what these guys are going to do very obviously they're not going to sit and just take that on the chin so we're rolling two dice for the french to battle back Oh, not bad. Okay, so they rolled that. Doesn't count. They rolled one uh, melee result, the Sabres. So the line infantry also take a hit. So we've got quite a battle going on here for that little village. Each side needs to reinforce, do you not think? But okay, so we saw how we opened the battle with this advance on the right flank. Uh, which was a really good opening move. Uh, the British unit fell back under withering fire from the French. Um, and uh, we've tried to take back the town. We've caused casualties. Uh, we're whittling them down, but each side needs some support there. Okay, so uh, British have finished their move. They discard that card. They have two more cards and have to choose one of them. They're going to keep probe right flank turned over, over there. Discard the other one. Take two command cards. None of us have no idea what, what those are. Place it over there. Best of luck, everyone. Next turn. It's the French turn. Turn over. And we have assault centre. 
we have leadership and we have attack right flank. <laughs> oh, I did say that they need to reinforce that flank. Uh, this card is going to give us the chance to order three units. Do I keep up the momentum? Or assault center? Do I now apply pressure to the center? Having five original cards, that card symbol there would allow me to move or order five units in the center. Or I've got the leadership card. Now the leadership card, we can issue an order to all leaders. And when a leader is attached to a unit, the unit is also ordered as long as the leader remains with the unit. So now I'm not confined to a single flank. This is brilliant how these options play out for you during the game, giving you some freedom. So I could order that unit, for instance, if I played this card, because they have a, a leader with them. I could order this leader here to join a unit as well. And I could order this unit to move here because this unit has a leader. But I'm not going to do it. I'm either going to attack right flank where I can order three units and, and, and hopefully reinforce these guys or start applying pressure in the center. I'm going to apply pressure in the center. Okay, we're going to attack. No, we're not. We're going to assault center. Although that was very, very tempting. Um, but we'll see what we're going to do with that shortly. So those come back over here. We're going to assault center. Now, with assault center, it's the card symbol. Go back to our original allocation, which was five cards. I can order five units in the center. So let's do just that. Okay. Uh, first unit, these guys are coming up onto the ridge. Give them a view of the battlefield. Second, the artillery is moving forward, like so. Third, the line infantry here is moving forward. Now don't forget I can order five units. That artillery unit there, um, they can't now battle because uh, they're foot artillery. Um, and they moved, say, so just pushing the guns forward into a new position. Four, I'm going to have this leader join that unit there. It's going to be the grenadier unit here, this heavy infantry. They're going to move one further up. So we're applying a bit of pressure to the British centre to give the British something else to think about now the movements we made there's uh, we've already said the artillery can't fire the uh, infantry are not in range because it has to be two hexes uh, all the enemy are at least three hexes away but that's good okay we're moving our battle lines forward we used that card discard it we've got two left I'm discarding this one because if you remember, we still need a card for our right flank, um, like so. So we'll retain that card. We draw two more off the command deck. We don't know what they are. On they go on top. It's the British turn. So we take the British cards. Probe right flank. Attack right flank. This is all over here, you see. And probe center. Probe center. Pro Ooh. I don't want to do anything on the right flank. And both of those cards are for the right flank. Probe center. I could look at issuing an order to units in the center. Okay, one unit I'm going to order is... 
the 95th Rifles, one, two, are going to move up to here. Okay, one, two, three. My artillery are going to fire at the French artillery before they start making a mess of me on the ridge here. It's one, two, three range. Three range for the British foot artillery. I think we roll two dice. Yep. Uh, there's no modifications. So we roll two dice. Uh, this is for my second order in the centre. Uh, no, no good. No good at all, because I rolled a sabre symbol, that's only for melee, and I rolled an, in, uh, rolled an infantry symbol, but I'm firing at artillery, so that was completely ineffective. Um, and that's the finish. Okay, well, I hoped that that would be a little better, but never mind. So, we use that card, we're discarding it. You take the English cards, which one do I want to keep? I'll keep atta attack right flank with three units. That one gets kept, the other one is discarded. We draw two units, two command cards. And let's see what's gonna happen next. right flank uh, to order a single unit on my French right flank and I think it's going to be this unit here to melee uh, this depleted British unit so because it's French line they get an extra dice so it's four blocks so it's four dice plus an extra one for French line in melee, so that's five dice. So we're hoping for a good result. We've got, oh, three don't count, but those two certainly do. We've got an infantry casualty, uh, plus the sabers for the melee casualty. That's two uh, blocks gone. So that is, the first victory banner for the French. There you go. First victory banner for the French. And we'll place that just here. Good result, the French. Well done. Now, because it was scout, means we can draw an extra card. First of all, the scout card has to go. 
and then we will uh, let's have a look we will keep our fire and hold card we'll discard that one and we'll take two but an extra one three because of that scale card we've now got four cards ready for next turn but four cards will only be for a single turn so that's the French turn. Well done, first victory banner. Let's have a look at how the English are going to respond to that. Scout left flank. Again, it's just one unit. Okay, attack centre or leadership. Actually, do you know what? The English might scout left flank. Because I've just seen a great opportunity for that. Uh, British artillery here to open up on this French line. After the last melee, by the way, when the French won the melee, they could have advanced after combat to take ground. So they could have advanced into there, um, but the idea of being surrounded by British units was not appealing, so that's why we didn't do that. Um, that's not compulsory, so we held where we were. But unfortunately now, due to this card, the British artillery are going to open up. It's a two hex range, four foot artillery, so that's three dice. Oh dear. Okay, let's go. And, oh gosh, okay, no combat hits, but two retreat flags. Um, okay, so that unit has got to go back to, uh, and you can disregard terrain except for impassable terrain when you're retreating. So for instance, these guys can go one, two into the woods and that's what I think they'll do. Like, so stand up guys, thank you. Um, one, two retreats. They could have stayed in the clear, um, but it's just good to get them in that bit of cover while they reorganise there like that. So that's fine. Um, good move, I think, by the British. Um, would have hoped for a casualty result, but nevertheless. Okay, so discard that one. Uh, we'll keep uh, attack centre card. We'll discard that one. We'll draw uh, three cards because it was a scouting card, wasn't it? So there you go, back to the French. Now, come on, French, come on, the French, come on, the French. Where do we need to go now? I think we need to bolster the move on our centre. Do we not? Okay. Four cards. Oh, good grief. And they're all tactics cards. <laughs> Fire and hold, cavalry charge, rally, bombard. Um, oh, bombard. I think we're going to do that. Let's just see how this plays out. Bombard. Um, I can move an artillery unit up to three hexes. Like, for instance, this artillery unit here could go one, two, three. Ooh. That's tempting. But I can't battle with him. And I can order up to four artillery units. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. This artillery unit here is going to move up to three hexes. They must have been limbered up quickly or something like that. One, two, three. Are we happy with that? Yes, 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 it's maintaining the pressure. Of course we are. Okay, it's maintaining the pressure. That's what we'll do. Um, and this artillery unit is going to stay where he is, but he can battle with up to two additional dice because he's long range, you see. So one, two, three. I think that would normally give him two dice. Is it? Let me just double check on that. Uh, yeah, normally give him two dice. But he can battle because of this Bombard card, with an additional two dice. 
So four dice. Do I hit the British artillery or do I hit a line? I'm going to hit a line regiment, aren't we? Yes, of course we are. Right in the centre. So that's two dice plus the additional two with my Bombard card. That's four dice. Oh, this is not going to be pleasant. Let's go. Ouch! Now to the four dice. Three infantry hits. Ouch! Three infantry hits. Oh, that's created a bit of a gap. Not good. Okay. Well, not good for the British, good for the French. That was a good turn. Are they now going to be confident, are confident enough to move forward and exploit that? We'll see. Okay, discard that card. I no longer have... Uh, I'm, I'm able to keep four cards, so I've still now got to discard down to one. I think I'm going to do... I'll keep fire and hold. Discard the other two. And take two. Okay, so we're now back to three cards. For the Frenchies. Oh, ho, 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 ho. and how are the Brits going to... Respond to that. Oh, it's attack center, probe, right flank. Oh, that's tempting. Counter attack. Recon in force. Counter attack. Issue the same order card that your opponent just played. <sighs> okay. Okay. We're having an artillery duel. Counter attack. So we're playing it as the same card as the French just played, which was Bombard. So I've got two artillery units and both are going to fire. They're both going to fire uh, one, two, three. So that's two die and an extra two die because of that Bombard card. So that's four dice. Oh, here we go. Boom. Ouch! Okay. We've got out of that lot one casualty and two retreats. But first of all, we've got to check to see if we've got a leader casualty. Each time a unit with a, an accompany with an attached leader takes a casualty, the leader must check uh, to see if he's a casualty or not. So we roll two dice, and if we get two sabers on those two dice, and that's obviously very, very rare, it's not often gonna happen, then the leader's also a casualty. No, nothing. But we had retreat two. Do you know, um, the leader can nullify one of the retreat flags. The fact that we're supported at two hex sides can nullify, nullify a retreat flag. But we don't have to. We're going to nullify one of them. I just want to move this guy back. They need to get out of trouble. Like so. Okay, so the next counter battery fire is going to be this guy here. One, two, so that's three rolls. The two additional dice is five. He's going to roll five dice against that artillery there because that artillery moving up there is just too much of a threat. So counter battery fire there. Boom. With five dot. No. <laughs> Look at that. In case you can't see them, I'll just bring them there. Four infantry hits and a saber hit. No effect on that artillery. What a waste. Sometimes you're just unlucky, but I must admit a roll like that is a real, a real bummer. That is a disappointment right there. Okay. Um, that was a, <laughs> it was a good card to play. We've got to discard down to one. Um, I think we're going to keep 
attack center for next time. Place those in there, draw our additional two cards. And off we go again with the French turn. So an update on what's just happened then. Uh, the French army has just had a couple of really good, really successful turns. And it looks like, if you remember, the idea right at the beginning of the game was for the French to turn this flank, if at all possible. This was a very strong flank for the French. Um, and that's what's happened so far. And they've moved light cavalry up as well to see if they can take advantage of any situation. The French now have three victory banners, having destroyed a couple more units. The first was the melee attack uphill, uh, finished off the British unit that was on that hill. That was one victory banner. And when we had uh, the tactic card uh, bayonet charge, it allowed four infantry units anywhere on the board to advance up to two hexes and still battle uh, in melee uh, to uh, signify a bayonet charge. And that's exactly what happened here. Um, a line unit moved up into the woods. Uh, this unit here uh, charged the British unit that was there and uh, wiped them out. And they've also advanced to take the ground that the British unit was on. So that was another victory banner. You see the French in melee, uh, this is the brilliant asymmetry. The French in melee are very, very strong. These are big guys, uh, heavily equipped in the main, uh, and they were difficult to stop in column uh, by infantry. Um, so they get an extra uh, dice uh, in melee combat. So a four block unit, a French line unit, will actually get five dice and so on. For the British, it's the other way around. The British uh, line tend to get an extra dice in ranged combat, which tends to signify the superior British musketry. Uh, and we've had a little bit of uh, an advance on this side as well. Um, oh, and a an attack uphill here against the uh, the rifle light infantry, my 95th rifles, um, and they are nearly wiped out. So if the French attack here again, before these guys can move, that's another very easy uh, victory banner for the French. Let's see what the British can do in reply. Attack centre probe left flank so we could do something over here or assault left flank no point wasting assault left flank don't have enough units over on the british left flank anyway so probe left flank that could be a reasonable one to use so let's have a look we're going to move the line infantry the portuguese line infantry so I've got two units I can move. Portuguese line infantry to here. Whoops. Like so. Into melee with the French. Okay. So the plucky Portuguese uh, are coming into action for the first time. They were in reserve there at the back. Um, and they will be melee, uh, uh, going into melee with these French line. 
this is where you're now going to see a combined arms attack uh, on this unit here. The Portuguese are going in with the bayonets and meanwhile uh, the French line infantry here are going to be raked in flank uh, at point blank range by this artillery. They've done a good job, but they may have gone a step too far. So how does combined arms work? Uh, it means that you can add an artillery unit into a melee attack by cavalry or by infantry and add their dice to your dice roll. And when you add them, add them to your dice roll, if the artillery roll cross sabers, that also gets counted as a hit for the artillery, whereas normally it wouldn't, but because it's combined arms, it will. So uh, the Portuguese line are gonna roll four, four dice. The uh, foot artillery at point blank range, so basically, uh, to be honest, we are firing grape and they're going to fire four. So we're rolling eight combat dice, combined arms about that line unit that went too far. And if you remember earlier on in the game, uh, in fact, a couple of times in total, uh, a unit has had the chance to follow up to take ground, but I decided not to do that. This time, I decided to do it. But um, uh, now there's going to be eight combat dice against that unit there and we've got one kill two kill three kill and three retreat so three kill one two three pity it wasn't wiped out actually because the brits still haven't yet got a victory banner um, and three retreat hexes one, two, can't do that. So you have to go one, two, three. That's fine. And the Portuguese will take ground. Because they're fairly safe to do so just there. Okay, that's cool. That was a good round for the British, but my goodness, uh, this left flank of the British here has really suffered. The French are doing very, very well with three victory banners. So that was that card played. Uh, what should we keep? We'll keep attack center. We'll dispose of that one. We'll draw two more cards like so. Um, I think we'll just have one more turn uh, each um, because this video is going to be very, very long. <laughs> uh, it's a great battle. I hope you agree. Um, there's been a lot going on, um, but I don't want it to end up, for your sake, basically, uh, a two-hour video because that just won't do. So, uh, French attack. Ooh, 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 ooh. I think we'll go attack centre for the French, meaning they can order three units. Let's take a look. I think, right, okay. I think first unit's going to be here. Let's melee here, uphill. So four blocks, four dice. It's French line, so they get an extra one. So that's five minus one for uphill. So they're still rolling four dice, and they only need one hit to get it, and they got it. In fact, they've got two. Uh, so there we go. So they get another victory banner. The French now have four victory banners uh, out of the, uh, I think, was it six required? I think it was, wasn't it? Yeah, six victory banners required. Now we're in that same situation again. Do we advance into that hex and take ground? Well, it's uphill. Uh, oh, do you know? Yes. 
Yes, I think they will. OK, so the French have advanced. So that was one out of the three in the centre. Uh, OK, this artillery has got to have a go, hasn't it? Uh, one, two, three. We're trying to get a victory banner. That's one, two, three. So that's two dice. Come on, come on, artillery, boom. Oh no, nothing, nothing. We got sabers, which is only good in melee, or the combined arms, as you saw up there. And we got artillery. So that's no good, so we got one more for the center. Uh, we've still got all this cavalry in reserve here. Grenadiers, heavy infantry, moving up onto the crest. Like so. Oh, wow. Okay, so that was another good attack. We've still got probe centre, so the French are going to keep that one. Draw two more cards. We'll allow the Brits to have one more go. Come on. Plucky Portuguese over there, look. Um, attack center, probe center, or counter attack. Issue the same order. Well, that's not going to do any good this time. Attack center. I think that's what we'll do. Attack center for the British. Okay. Uh, now, I've got three units to move. One. Moving up to plug the gap. Two to bolster the defence there. And three, move that one back so that it doesn't become an easy victory banner for the French. Discard that. And discard that. And draw two. And I think that's where we'll leave it. Um, I really enjoyed the playthrough. Uh, I think as a play demo, hopefully I've done enough to whet the appetite of those out there that still haven't taken the plunge with this game, just like I didn't. It's taken me years. Um, but it's a fascinating game. It's so easy to play. I think you'll agree with that. And with um, uh, Richard Borg's solo adaptation of the rules, The Power of Three, um, it works really, really quickly, and it means the hands of cards are not too much to manage for anyone. Um, so, there you go. Hope you've enjoyed it, and thanks very, very much for tuning in and taking a look. Please subscribe if you possibly can, because it means such a lot. And we'll see you for the next game, whatever that may be. Exciting times. Bye-bye. Thanks.